hi guys welcome back to the channel hi i'm chideran in this channel i share on marriage personal finance and tips for self-improvement so in this video i'm going to be sharing how to start investing in the uk which is specifically focused for immigrants like me because i feel like it's important we have these conversations just so we're also maximizing the opportunities that are available in the uk now before i jump into this video it's very important to say this again this is not a financial advice i am not a financial advisor i'm just sharing information that i feel could help you make informed decisions and also there's a free guide to invest in which is linked in the description box below if you would like to get one click the link and download it for free it's absolutely free to download you're welcome so click the link below to download so this video is divided into four sections the first i'm going to talk about steps to investing the things you need to do before you start investing the second part i'm going to talk about financial terms talking about explaining things like stocks bonds um shares like what these things are and then the third part i'm going to go in into how to start investing like the steps you actually need to take i'm going to mention platforms that you can start investing with here in the uk as an immigrant and then the last part of this video i am going to talk about best beginner friendly investments like if you want to start investing today what can you put money into as a beginner so make sure to stick around to the end of this video is definitely going to be valuable and it is super packed and if you're already liking the video don't forget to like it comment please leave a comment and share this video just so i'm encouraged because i did put a lot of work into creating this video without further hesitation let's get right into the video so first thing we'll talk about the steps to invest in the very first thing is to pay off your debt okay you cannot be owing people money and you're trying to invest no you have to pay off your debts first and that's because usually these debts come with a high interest rate and generally the amount you're going to earn on your investments is not usually higher than these interest rates on these debts that you have it's really like credit card debt so try as much as possible to clear out your debt first by focusing on the ones that are high interest debt so that you're not owing anybody and you have a clean slate to start um, investing and of course you know i'm speaking to immigrants in this video if you're a uk citizen and you have a student loan that's a different kind of debt that you can actually just clear out but that's not my focus in this video i'm speaking to immigrants who most times we don't have any student loan we had to pay everything ourselves so make sure to clear out your debt first before you start investing the second thing is to set up an emergency fund i know you've probably heard emergency for emergency fund you're tired of hearing it it's just basically creating a safety net for yourself so that you're not investing all your money and then once that investment goes down your heart to go up because you are losing everything so you need to have that hedge you need to have that safety net if today they fire you what are you going to do do you have enough money to keep going that's what an emergency fund is for so start off trying to save up an emergency fund of at least one month and how do you know the amount you should have look at your monthly living expenses how much you spend on a month-to-month -month basis you should have that amount times three at least times three in your emergency fund so start off saving at least one month living expenses two month living expenses and then you can take it up to three months and if you can't even make it six months the larger your safety net the better for you just make sure you have that sorted before you start investing the third thing to do before you start investing is to determine the type of investor you are all of us are different we all have different risks appetites I mean there are people that go bungee jumping I could never because I'm too scared of that so we all have different risks appetites consider the type of investor you are are you conservative do you want to keep risks low or do you want to take risks but don't forget that the lower the risk the lower the reward the higher the risk the higher the reward so you can just try and see if you are if you're the type that likes to stay in the middle or if you're on the high end or on the low end you need to determine this the next thing to do also before you start investing is determine how much you want to invest monthly and the way to know this is to actually know the amounts that you spend on a month-to-month -month basis so you need to track your expenses monthly you need to track your income monthly so you can now be like oh based on how much i spend based on how much i save i can afford to put 50 pounds a month investing or i can afford to 200 pounds a month investing so you need to track your expenses click on the link in the description box i have created a simple tracker sheet for your income and expenses we preset formulas all you have to do is put in the digits and it should do the calculations for you at the end of every month link in the description box below other thing as well you need to do before you start investing is to understand what you're investing in at the end of the day knowledge is paramount as a rule of thumb don't put money into something you don't understand so if the stocks and shares things are still confusing you you need to learn about it 
and this is what this video is going to provide some background of basic knowledge for you to start investing the next thing we're going to go into financial terms all the financial jargon that they say that make this whole investing thing complicated i once tweeted this that i don't think investing needs to be this complicated they just use a lot of jargon and jargon means like words specific to that industry and make it so difficult for you to understand i know how difficult it was for me to really understand the differences between index fund mutual fund all of that and that's why i'm creating this video so you don't have to worry about that so what is a stock a stock is a share in a company so basically if you own a stock you own a small amount of that company depending on how large the stocks you are you have are that is basically what a stock is and if the company makes profit they can pay you a dividend for owning that stock so that's what a stock is a, is a small ownership of a company a larger company or a large company it's a small ownership that's what a stock is and the next thing i want to explain what is a bond i'm sure you've heard bond government bonds all of that bond is just being english for money that you borrow to people imagine that emeka comes to me now and say he needs hundred thousand pounds me i'm like i cannot borrow hundred thousand pounds so. so i now call all my village people all of us now decide to borrow emeka one thousand pounds each now that is kind of like how a bond works a bond is a loan that you give to a company or a government with a fixed interest on it so there are two types of bond there's corporate bond there's government bond so if you invest in a bond basically you're loaning money either to the government or to the company and they usually be like oh you get 2.5 percent interest or two percent interest for the span of three years so usually you would lock this money and then they'll be paying you the interest on the money so that is what a bond is and another way to just think about this that i watched in a video someone said my word is my bond that's what you think about when you think of bond like oh, when someone says oh borrow me 50 pounds i'll pay you back so and so amount at the end of the year and person is like oh my word is my bond so when you think of bond think of my word is my bond meaning you're borrowing someone money and they are promising to pay you back a certain amount and for a certain period of time so next thing is what is an investment fund an investment fund is basically when people collectively purchase securities and securities here just means stocks funds and shares but each person still retains ownership of their shares so basically people buy these things together but everybody still retains ownership now the two types of investment funds i'm going to mention here are index funds and mutual funds i, I think one thing to just explain here once once you hear fund just know that a fund is a collection of stocks and shares a stock is like having one type of chocolate so maybe i have like bounty chocolate that's a stock that's one but then if i now buy like a celebration pack of sweets that have different types of sweet there's sneakers there is maltesers there's bounty there's all the different types of chocolates that is a fund so a fund is a collection of stocks and you know shares while a stock is ownership of one company but a fund is ownership of different companies that are already put in a basket for you that's what a fund is so there's mutual fund and there's index fund it's a mutual fund people just come together and invest money in these securities like in this basket all of you invest in one basket right but all of you still retain ownership of that basket and then the thing with this is the stocks and shares in that fund has to be managed by some so somebody is going to be trading it on the stock market this brings me to the next thing stock markets we've all heard stock markets stock market is a market where stocks and shares are exchanged so if someone wants to sell their stock they'll go to the stock market and sell it right if someone wants to buy a stock they go to the stock market and buy it so stock market is just a marketplace for stock and shares if that makes sense whatever stocks and shares are in a mutual fund needs to be managed and the person that manages this is known as the fund manager and because this your fund or this basket is actively managed by somebody is actively looked after someone is looking after it so they are not losing money or anything there is a fund management fee which is why you're paying the fund manager to look after that basket so that your money is coming and your money is not going do you understand so there's a fund management fee which usually is a percentage of the money you've put into it and it ranges from like 0 0.5 to 1.0 percent of the money you're putting into it so they'll take their pay from the money you're putting into it so just know that there's such a thing as fund management fee there's a fund manager for a mutual fund i hope this makes sense so the next type of fund that i also want to mention is index fund so an index fund is a type of fund that tracks a market index i swear this thing when when you say it like this is so confusing let me explain it the way that i understand it i don't know if this is the right way to explain it but i'm just going to explain the way that i understand it example of an index fund is the s p 500 or the FTSE 100 in the UK. For example, the S&P 500 is a, is a collection of stocks from 500 large companies that are doing well in the US. So when you in the, invest in an S&P 500, you are basically investing in 500 companies, okay? So when you put your money in an S&P 500 fund, your money is spread across 500 companies, if that makes sense. So with an index fund, most times they are not actively managed, meaning there is no fund manager. And as a result of that, the management fee is usually low. Why? Because nobody is actively managing it. 
does that make sense <laughs> and also another way that i understand index fund is if, for example the s p 500 what i understand by this is all the 500 companies on the stock market the way they are behaving is the way your index fund is going to behave so with the index fund you're not trying to beat the market you're trying to replicate the market so if these 500 companies if some go up some go down then it's like an average of that is what will be ha happening in your s p 500 index fund if that makes sense so the next thing i want to mention here is compound interest which is a terminology you would also hear with investing compound interest is basically the interest you earn on interest so if you invest 100 pounds today and you earn an interest of maybe two pounds that's your simple interest that's the first interest the simple interest then now you have 102 pounds so if you not earn interest on top 102 pounds maybe you not earn two another two pounds on top 102 pounds that is now 104 pounds so you've earned interest on interest that's now a compound interest and it increases the longer you leave your asset so the longer you invest the more compounding interest work in your favor compounding interest works better over the long term as opposed to a short-term investment so it's good to think long term when you're investing another thing i want to mention here is that when you're investing you need to consider the investment charges just like i already mentioned there's fund management fee and there's also something called the annual management fee which i think is also the same as fund management fee but just ensure you check read through the fine lines ask them what percentage of your money are you going to be paying as fees it's not make sense that you're paying a huge chunk of your money as fees so make sure you read through the fine lines ask them what is the management fee for this they should give you an example of like if someone invests one thousand pounds what's going to be like the charges on that in a year so make sure you ask there are different ways they put this on investment assets you can see amc which means annual management charge there's ocf which means ongoing charge charging figure meaning how much they are charging you on a month-to-month -month basis to look after your funds so now we are going to the third part of this video which is the part i think everybody is really interested in how to start investing in the uk first thing you have to open a stocks and shares isa in the uk if you want to invest in stocks and shares you need a stocks and shares isa if you've not seen my other video where i mentioned and went into detail on the different type of isa isa means individual savings account click the link up here there's a video up here watch that video is going to provide some more insight so you need to open one now how can you open one you, you can open one with a financial services company please i would advise that you don't open a stocks and shares isa with your regular bank and that's because they usually have a limited amount of stocks and shares you can invest into but with an investment firm or a financial services company they have a wider net of stocks and funds and shares that you can invest into so try to avoid the traditional banks the basic requirements are your resident in the uk and they are over the age of 18. now what are the types of platforms where you can um, open a stocks and shares isa i'll just give some examples this is not by any chance an exhaustive list there's vanguard vanguard is like one of the oldest there is aj bell there's hagrid's langs down i don't know if i pronounced that well but we put it on the screen you can look at these places there are also like digital financial services as well that provide these services there's money box there is plum there is trading 212 i think trading 212 is more for trading but you can check all of these platforms out they can allow you open a stocks and shares isa and invest into them another thing to mention here is that any stocks and shares isa you are opening ensure that they enable direct debit which means you can set up an automated amount to pay into that um, account every month that's the way you want to do it so you remove the manual work you just automate everything so once you've set up your account set up a direct debit and that's because you've already determined how much you want to invest monthly so if you're like oh every month i'm to 50 pounds every month i'm to 100 pounds set up that direct debit from your account into the stocks and shares isa so that way every month 100 pounds leaves your account and goes into investment and it is passively being done and you're not actively having to transfer money every month next thing i'm saying of investing like i already mentioned earlier you need to think long term if you want to invest make sure it is for at least five years so you can give yourself a chance to beat the market don't invest now and then three days later you want the money to have grown overnight investment is not it's not a get rich quick scheme right it's something that slow and steady slow and steady wins the rate compounding interest will work in your favor the longer you invest so at least five years and even just think long term with investing and that's why whatever money you're putting there make sure it's money you're comfortable with putting it's not like money that you are planning to use and do something next year no make sure it's money 
money you're comfortable like just letting go of if that makes sense this brings me to the last part of this video which is beginner friendly investments in the uk if you want to start investing you have to consider the type of person you are do you want high risks and high reward do you want low risks and low reward you really need to consider this so for example if you're the type that likes high risks and high reward then you want to invest more in stocks and shares because those ones have the tendency to go up and go down and go up and go down right like you have a higher tendency of earning more with stocks and shares so you might want to look into owning individual stocks and shares yourself um not necessarily trading you don't need to trade them just buy the stocks and shares keep buying them and holding on to them and that way you might beat the market um, so if you have high risks, that's what you want to look at. If you're low risk, low reward, then you want to look into investing into bonds, into like fixed securities, which is bonds, like I mentioned, or investing into funds because funds usually have like an interest percentage that they've already, they've already set out. They can be like, oh, you can expect like 2% interest on this fund or 3% interest. So that already has like a fixed interest rate, but with a stock, there's no predicting. It can go really high, it can go really low. Do you understand? That's why it is high risk. But with fund and bonds, it is more low risk so you might want to look into that now if you want to start investing today an index fund is a great place to start why number one it has like low management fee like i already explained earlier and then also it removes the work from you all you have to do is just pay a direct debit into that fund into an index fund maybe at the ftsc 100 or the s p 500 you just automate that money there and then it's done as a beginner you're probably not an expert so you're trying to see how you can make it as easy as possible for yourself you can also consider investing in mutual funds and um, that way there's someone that is managing it but also make sure to check the fund management fee so you're not paying too much so index funds actually your best bet with like beginner level investing and then when you feel more confident you can start buying individual stocks yourself not necessarily trading them but buying them yourself one thing i can say here for example and a platform that i know like plum you can actually buy the stocks and just see the stocks there i think i'll put an interface of the app here and just see the stocks there and you can easily just do that but they have like a subscription fee so at the end of the day you need to do the math and decide which platform do you want to use Another beginner friendly investment strategy, this more strategy, is to diversify your portfolio. So if you decide you are the high risk, high reward, you want to own more of stocks and shares, you want to buy these things, these stocks individually. One thing I would say here is it is better for you to diversify. What diversification is, is owning different types of stocks and shares in different geographical locations, number one, and different industries. Don't just be buying stocks from tech companies, just don't just have Amazon, Google, um, which other one? Amazon on google facebook you know these big big companies in tech and just be like oh yeah i have stock no you need to diversify own stocks in biotechnology own stocks in um you know like all around own stocks in tesco own stocks in sainsbury's like diversify the industry you have stocks in and then the other one is diversify the geographical location don't just own stocks in the uk own stocks in china own stocks in nigeria own stocks in zimbabwe own stocks like diversification is the key for you if you want to invest more into stocks as opposed to investing into index funds i hope this makes sense <laughs> this is everything i hope this gives you a head start to actually invest in and that you're better knowledgeable as to what investment is and like what investment vehicles to consider and also like fees and everything if you enjoyed this video please ensure to give it a thumbs up i did put a lot of work into creating this video make sure to give it a thumbs up like subscribe and thank you for watching till next time guys bye bye